eight seconds to victory or defeat riding on the back of a raging horse that is doing everything in its power to throw you off. On this episode of High Stakes Success, we take a look at the psychology, the training methods, and everything else it takes to be successful in the world of bareback riding and rodeo sports. Let's go. Hello, friends, and welcome to the Performance Psychology Podcast, High Stakes Success. I'm your host, Jesse Day, and today we're going to be talking bucking broncos and rodeo sports. We have an expert bareback rider to talk about everything that it takes to be successful in the sport. Marvin Alderman Jr. joins us. Marvin, how are you? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Doing really excellent. You were recently here in Vancouver for the Cloverdale Rodeo competing, right? Yes, sir, I was. What was that experience like? What did you take from it, and uh, how was it? Oh, it was great. I love that rodeo. It's one of my favorite rodeos all year long. I've been there for the last three years, since 2015, and uh, it's a great experience every time I come. I love Canada. Awesome. I was just watching some footage, actually, of bareback riding, which is the sport that you excel at, and i got to tell you, it's really crazy, actually, just like the insanity of, of how much the horses are bucking and, and it just looks like it's so dangerous for those people who don't know about bareback riding. Could you give a little introduction and let us know what the sport is all about? Yeah. Um, bareback riding. I've been, I mean, I've been riding bear horses since I was 12 years old and I'm 25 now. Uh, it's a, I mean, it's a fast paced sport. Um, you gotta be real on top of your stuff. I mean, you gotta take the fight to them. You gotta be kind of mentally tough and, physically physically as well i mean it's not really more brute strength than as people think but uh i mean horses they'll uh, hit you in your back you know when you're riding you gotta be real fast with your feet and real uh core strength you gotta have real real good core strength and uh, be able to adapt and overcome on different situations on whatever the horse is doing you know so there's a lot of different things to take in perspective on how you got to approach the sport and stuff like that but uh, it's just a something I love doing since I was 12 years old so that is amazing what is it that first got you into the sport and what appealed to you about bareback riding it seems like it's very dangerous isn't it yeah it is there's a I mean there's a lot of different things you can I mean even if you ride a if you're in tip-top shape you know and you ride one uh, you'll still get off and be a little sore even if you ride it dead perfect but I got into bear, what made me want to do barrack riding was my dad rode barrack horses, and um, I grew up in Kissimmee, Florida, and whenever I was two years old or three years old, I got my first sheep, started riding calves and then steers and junior bulls, and then when I was 12, I started getting on bareback horses at junior rodeos, and uh, so that's what made me want to ride barrack horses, and then I just have always wanted to do it because it's more like a fight rather than bull riding because I've rode bulls too and still do, but... So what would you say is the, the, the main difference between bareback riding and bull riding? Is there any huge differences between the technique and the way you have to ride both animals? Yeah, absolutely. I think bull riding, you got to have more of a controlled aggression uh, in a sense. Like, um, you know, if you try to just bear down and brute strength on a bull, you're going to get slammed on your head because there ain't no way you're going to overpower a 2,000-pound bull. Right. Um, a horse, though, um, you can kind of just grit your teeth and close your eyes and be sure you're, you're uh, setting your feet before their feet hit the ground and, and just let it roll, but uh, in a sense as well. But there's bull riding's a little bit more different. you got to be more of a calm and cool and collected, and you'll, it'll work out a lot better for you. And so you prefer bareback riding more? Yeah, I, I mean, uh, I've wanted to make, I wanted to make the NFR in the bareback riding, so I've been focusing on that. And um, so the last... Uh, Two years, I've just been riding bear horses mainly because it's a little hard to rodeo with other bareback riders that don't ride bulls too and go to 100 rodeos a year and, and uh, be able to make them all with bareback riders, you know, two in a day. It's hard to make it when you're into bull riding as well. Right. So how many times per year do you compete in bareback riding? I go to probably a, um, 80 to 50 to 80 to 100 rodeos a year. Wow. Um, just depending, I mean long as I ain't hurt, I'm going every day. Yeah. So you're training every day as well? If you, if you don't have a competition? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I work out uh, twice a day and 
I actually train mixed martial arts as well. That's amazing. We we had a mixed martial arts fighter on our show actually first episode. That that's that's so awesome. I've only had one. I've only done one fight, but I oh only you have do it because the workout aspect of it because it's a really good workout uh, cardio and yeah. I mean, works. I feel the best when I'm training mixed martial arts when I'm riding. So. Talk us through a little bit of the training regimen. What is it uh, that you do basically year in and year out to kind of stay in shape to be able to ride at your best? I do a lot of body workouts. Um, I don't lift a whole lot of weights, but I do lift some weights. And uh, mainly, I, I mean, I got a spur board that I ride for barrack riding. You know, I put my rigging on it and I practice spurring. Uh, that's one training aspects that I do. And then a lot of just body workouts, you know, and uh, some small weights and stuff like that as well. Awesome. And you grapple as well. And do you find that training grappling, uh, translates very well and helps you in bareback riding? Yeah. Um, I mean the flexibility of it and stuff like that is really good. Uh, and then the workouts that, uh, Brent Chapman, who is, uh, the guy I train with, he, um, the stuff he has us do is, uh, just makes me feel at tip top shape and how I can perform. That's amazing to see that there's a crossover between those two different sports, but it makes total sense. So how about leading up to a competition? Is there any special things you do to prepare for specific competitions? And like, for example, do you know who your opponents are, who you're going to be competing against? And does that change anything in terms of your approach? I don't let, uh, I get on every horse like it's going to be the bucking the son of a gun I've ever been on in my life and uh, and go at it like that. So I don't try to let it change my uh, perspective at all. But I mean, when you draw a world champion bucking horse and you see your name beside it, I guess uh, you think a little bit more on it. But uh, I mean, I go at every one of them the same and, and give it everything I got like it's going to be the bucking this dude I've ever been on, you know? Yeah. Uh, yes, you do know before at pro rodeos, at big pro rodeos, you know, they'll, they'll, uh, they email you your horse and you can actually look it up on pro stats. So, I mean, I look them up when I'm going 2000 miles away, you know, cause you wouldn't want to go get on or drive 2000 miles to get on a 16 point horse where you're going to be like 70 points and not win nothing. Uh, but other than that, that'd be the only reason why I wouldn't go get on one. So how do you, how far in advance do you know which horse you're going to be riding? Uh, sometimes it's a, the shortest term is usually four days, I believe. Um, but sometimes, you know, a week, two weeks ahead of time, if it's a real big rodeo. Wow. So does that change your preparation depending on what horse that you're getting? No, I don't. Uh, I don't change nothing about that when I find out what horse, uh, sometimes you'll meet guys and they'll ask you, you know, what you got and you'll tell them and then they'll tell you about it. But I don't just go calling everybody in my phone book trying to figure out about what I got. Yeah. Um, but I mean, if it's a horse I've been on or something and not very desirable, then I know. But uh, or one I've been on and done really well on, then I know. But so, how do you win in the competition? I believe you have to stay on for a certain amount of seconds. Is that correct? Yes, you got to ride uh, each horse for eight seconds, and in the bareback riding, uh, you actually have to mark the horse out as well. Or you get a no score in pro rodeo, which is uh, the markout rule is the first jump of the horse out of the bucking chute. You got to have both your feet with your spurs in contact with the horse's neck while he hits the ground. And if you don't, then uh, it's a no score. Mm, wow. As well as you can't slap him with your free hand. Um, and you got uh, you to ride for eight seconds. Okay. And then so how do they determine the winner at the very end of it? Like who gets first place? They score the cowboy and the horse. Uh, there's two judges. One judge judged the horse 25 points and the cowboy. And then the other judge does the same thing, 25 for the horse, 25 for the cowboy. They mark me on how I'm sitting with on the horse and um, how, how I look in rhythm with the horse if I'm in timing, uh, how high my feet are on his neck, how fast my feet are beating his feet to the ground. Um, how hard the horse is kicking and how high he's jumping, uh, if he's fast, if he's not real fast, if he's got a lot of drop. Um, so they'll mark me on how controlled I am and how bucking the horse is. And that's how they come to a final score for each individual rider, and then the person with the highest score is first place, right? Correct. 
That's fascinating. So tell us about the technique behind riding. What is the technique that you need, the, the main factors that help you stay on a horse that's bucking like crazy like that for a full eight seconds? Uh, just to stay small, kind of. I mean, if that makes sense, you got to be real tight with your core and uh, mash with your feet and lift on your rigging. So, you, if, I mean, if your hand was to come out of your rigging, you'd want to punch yourself in the face, you know? Yeah, uh, because because you're lifting so hard. So um, and then you always want to mash real hard with your feet and bring your feet straight to your rigging handle and then shoot them back as fast as you can uh, and repeat the same thing, you know, and keep your chin down uh, so your head don't start yanking back. But Right. I want you to walk us through um, going up to a competition, like when it's on the day of a rodeo and you know you're going to be getting on a horse that's particularly uh, maybe a little bit crazy. Do you have a process that you go through to prepare or practice that day? And well, what's it like leading up to the time when you get on the horse? Do you do you get nerves or is it all just totally business for you? Uh, well, I, the day of competition, I just try to, I mean, the night before, I, I try to get a good night's sleep. And a lot of times that don't happen, but I try to. And uh, I mean, when I, I like to get to the rodeo about two hours before, um, I like to get something to eat before I get there and then. When I get to the rodeo, I stretch a lot, uh, get my motor running, you know, get my uh, blood pumping and make sure I'm all stretched out, get all my equipment on and then uh, get ready to do it when it comes down to it. But I don't, uh, I mean, I don't try to let myself get real nervous. No, I, uh, I have on a few occasions, but I don't really get just plumb nervous at all. I mean, I get nervous in the sense that, you know, this is what I do and I need to, uh, and how I'm going to do it, but I don't get nervous as of what I'm getting on. Yeah, because I think for most people, it would just be so terrifying to be put on the back of this big horse that you know is going to go crazy and try to buck you off. And just those moments when you're there waiting for the door to open and for the horse to rush out, um, that moment for you isn't isn't terrifying in the least? No, I, I mean, I love, that's one of the main things I love about barrack riding is just getting on an animal that big and, and taming it, you know, I like to I like David and Goliath, you know. Yeah. Wow. So you're that you've been doing this since you were 12 years old, you said. Yes, I have. Right. Um, I started riding bear courses when I was 12 in in Florida in junior rodeos, and uh, been doing it ever since. So I started. How I started was helped me out tremendously. I mean, uh, they had a set of 10 horses at the junior rodeos, and a set of five of them were kind of smaller horses that really jumped in the air and kicked hard. And then the, they had a set of five other ones that were kind of bigger, but um, were a little stronger and moved forward and didn't really kick that hard, you know? So it was really good for me learning how to ride bear horses in a perfect set to do it on. Right. So I see, I've seen and read as well that injury is quite a possible part of the sport. And you mentioned yourself that it can be quite dangerous. Have you yourself ever had to deal with injuries? And what are some of the most common injuries and setbacks that riders face physically from kind of just the, the day-to-day abuse of the sport? Uh, barrack riders, a lot of them have problems with their elbows, uh, uh, arms, and then uh, shoulders. Um, necks are a big thing. Um, me, myself, I've had a few injuries, but not, uh, I mean, I blew my knee out in 2012, had to have surgery on it and it still gives me a little problems. I broke my hands and, uh, popped my shoulder out of place and broke my collarbone, uh, broke my ankles and ribs and stuff like that. But a lot, I mean, a lot of people have problems with their necks and I've never really had too many problems with my neck until about a year ago. It was the first time I ever had any kind of problems with my neck, but I had PRP done to it by my wife's boss, Scott Gregory here. And uh, that helped out tremendously, so I ain't had a problem with it since. Wow, and what did you get done to it again, sorry? Uh, it's PRP. What, it's, what is uh, that? It's, they, they draw your blood, they circulate it through a machine for 15 minutes, and then they pump it back in you wherever you're hurt. It's supposed to rebuild uh, tissue, cartilage, and tendons, you know, help your muscles, anything that's damaged. Right. And it does help. I ain't, I ain't had problems with it since. Yeah, I think I've heard some MMA fighters talk about that as well. For, for healing injuries. 
That's interesting. So in terms of the possibility of so many injuries, is bareback riding and bull riding as well a sport that basically you only have a certain amount of a window of time that you can compete in? Is it a sport that people kind of retire from early or do people go on to have long careers in the sport? Uh, no, people, yeah, you're, you're a bareback rider. You ain't going to be riding bareback horses for no 20, 30 years, you know. I mean, I've been riding bear horses for, I guess, 12 or 13 years now almost. Uh, so it's been a while for me already. But my my dad, he rode bear horses for 12 years, I think. So I've already been riding bear horses for longer than my dad did. But most people, bear riders, if you're rodeoing hard, you'll they'll retire around, you know, before 35 for sure. So that's the average, basically, career of a bareback rider doesn't go far beyond 35 years old? Yeah, I, I would say so. Probably, probably not even 35, probably 30. Wow. So what advice would you give to somebody who's interested in participating in the sport? Maybe somebody growing up who has a, a great interest in doing it. What do you think are the most important attributes for a rider to have going to be successful? I would just be as a, I mean, know 100% that you want to do it, you know, and, and then uh, be in tip top shape at your best and know 100% you're ready to do whatever, whether it's mixed martial arts, baseball, football, rodeo and uh, get with somebody that knows what they're doing and knows how to, because there's a lot of things that go into barrack riding as far as setting your rigging up and your glove, and that way you don't, you avoid some of the injuries as well, because, uh, I mean, if you don't have your glove and your rigging set up right, your hand can blow out, and that's the most one of the most dangerous things about riding, you know. So there's a risk of getting the hand broken, essentially? Well, that too, but your hand, uh, your glove, we ride with a, our rigging is like a suitcase type handle, um, and then our gloves are leather. And you set your a piece of leather up inside your rigging um, to where when you crack your hand around it, locks in and binds. Um, and if you don't have it, you know the right tightness and have your rigging handle exactly how you how it should be with your uh, size hand and the glove. Um, when them horses jump forward and kick, your hand will blow out, and uh, your hand blows out. You're going out the back and could get kicked. So. So it's, so it's not, not a good, good thing, thing at all. No. No. No, you know, it's a scary feeling whenever you go out the back and fly 30 foot in the air. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. So what lessons do you think you've learned from bareback riding and bull riding and all that sort of stuff that you can apply to everyday life? Is there like a really serious amount of work ethic that has to go into it in terms of like daily training, making sure you stay on top of even your nutrition and all that sort of stuff as well? Yeah, for sure. I mean, for some people it's different than others, you know, but, uh, there's a lot of different things. You, barrack riding, I've learned that uh, just rodeo and really in general, I mean, the people in rodeo, it's all like family. I mean, there's a but just about everybody I know or have met in rodeo as would do anything as far as give you the shirt off their back and um, the stock contractors as well. And uh, it's just like a big family. So everybody takes care of everybody. I've learned that treating people, other, other people, you know, is uh, – been pretty easy to me in the real world from rodeoing i've learned that you just gotta it's let me or it's taught me that given that everything you got every time for every second whether it's eight or you know a whole year or whatever um is a big thing and what i'll do for the rest of my life so so it's a very tight-knit community as well for sure yeah great so i want to ask you what your mindset is in that exact moment when you're on the horse you're about to go out they open the door, you, you go out there. What, what is exactly running through your mind? And, and it's like, what are you thinking when you're trying to stay on the back of that horse for, for the full time? I'm lift and uh, I just uh, lift and set my feet. I'm thinking I grip my teeth and uh, tuck my chin and give it everything I got and keep going. You know, I, when that horse jumps, when that horse turns his head, I. I set my feet, I throw my feet up there and set them in his neck and mean it, you know. When I nod my head, I, I act like it's going to be the bucket of the son of a gun I've ever been on, like I said. So I take the fight to him as soon as that gate opens. And you got to be 100% focused during that time, right? Yep, for sure. So, I mean, without when I get on, there's not a doubt in my mind that I'm not going to win or uh, at least defeat, I mean, beat my horse, you know, for sure. So I try to just be as solid as I can and fast as I can and, um, spur them as hard as I can. 
That is amazing. I think that was an awesome amount of insight that you gave us into the world of bareback riding and rodeo sports. And yeah, there's so many lessons that we can take, like the psychology behind it is very fascinating. Is there anywhere that you want to direct people to online where they can find you, uh, any sponsors or anything like that? Yeah, my sponsor is uh, Jack Hodge with James Hodge Auto Group in Ida Bell, Oklahoma, James Hodge Ford. Uh, he does a lot for me. Uh, he sponsors me and has for the last three years. So he does big things for me, and I appreciate him 100%. They're so he's got seven total dealerships, and they got the best deals around. So we ride Hodge over here, uh, and then as well as Short Go Extreme, uh, they help me out some too. But Jack Hodge, he's done a lot for me, and I appreciate him more than anything. Uh, and they can, if anybody wants to get in touch with me, they can go on Facebook and uh, like my page at Marvin Alderman Jr. Professional Bareback Rider, uh, and then my personal page is Marvin Alderman Jr. as well. I've got Instagram. Uh, you can go on Google and find some stuff on me too if you'd like. Okay, great. I'll put some links in the description below as well so people watching can uh, head on over there. Sounds good. All right. Thank you very much, sir. You have an amazing day and that was an awesome interview. I appreciate you having me on the show. Thank you, sir. All right, brother. You have a good day. All right. Bye. Bye now. So there you have it. Marvin Alderman Jr. giving some awesome insight into the world of rodeo sports. Very fascinating. The risk, the danger, and the fact that they go through so many injuries throughout their career makes it a truly remarkable sport to be able to succeed at. So as always, you can catch us at highstakesuccess.com. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. All that good stuff. And remember, when the stakes are high, success is the only option. Success.